Alrighty people, so this is Ross. I thought I would just give you guys an update on the greenhouse. What is going on in here? Because we've changed really just so much in here. Uh, first off, it's quite a big difference from last year because I can actually walk in here. I mean, there's actually room <laughs> to put my feet places. So if you've you know seen our videos in the past, we usually have our fig trees here stacked up maybe four or five pots high and this whole greenhouse is filled but you know a lot uh, as a part of that large effort i made to sell you guys bare rooted trees to then move away from potted trees and actually plant a lot of them in the ground i planted roughly i think around 30 in the ground uh in the fall before the winter came and then this is sort of what we're left with in terms of just the sheer amount of fig trees that are in pots that are, let's say in larger pots, um, or they're in a smaller pot here. As you can see, these are the five gallon sizes that I have on the top layer. Those are usually a varieties that really are just too late and might require a head start. Or there's something uh, that I'm really looking forward to fruiting. Like this is an Ishia black tree. I actually did two grafts there, one on each side of the rootstock. And I'm really looking forward to seeing Ishia black fruit. So I put it in this greenhouse to really just, it's pretty much a guarantee that I'm gonna see fruit. And almost a guarantee that I'm gonna see fruit at an earlier date than I normally would instead of actually just you know, normally taking them out of the out of the underneath the sunroom there, and then putting them on the patio in a more natural wake up process that usually is is dictated to the weather we get and our climate here in this in the Philadelphia area. You know, whereas if I had them in here, although it's quite dark in here because I have the tarp over top, just for insulation purposes, um, as soon as I take that tarp off the greenhouse will start to really warm up in addition to my space heater that actually I have here on a shelf. I really just decided to build a couple shelves and we'll talk about why that is in a minute, but essentially the space heater combined with the, the greenhouse effect, it really warms the, the greenhouse up pretty significantly. And then therefore, because it's so warm, uh, these trees get off to a nice head start. That's kind of our, our normal process every single year. Um, I also put in here a table. So this is a basically a propagation table. What I need is roughly another, I'm gonna say another three of these bins. I'm gonna get them at Home Depot. They're pretty high quality. I actually really seem to like them. Um, I've been using them for years actually now. And they fit, uh, you know, about 16, I think it's actually 12, yeah, 12 pots in each. And here's the brand. Sterilite. I find that these are holding up over the years, whereas I have one down here, which I got from Lowe's, which will hold double the amount of pots. Um, however, they break pretty easily, even though it's a pretty, I would say it's a really heavy duty container. Let's see the brand name on this one. Um, they just seem to break over time. This is its second year, so it's a hefty storage bin. And the Hefty brand, I would argue, is actually pretty good, but uh, seems like for my purposes, at least, maybe because there's just less pots in these, they just hold up better. Actually, here's some up here that have gone through, I think, at least a season or two. Um, I know the weather outside really destroys them, so there's that. Uh, but we've got our tree pots here, and we've pretty much just filled them up, filled up the bins in preparation for adding in our soil. There's the Just Natural Soil Conditioner. You know, it's so cold outside, guys, that the ground's frozen and also the soil is frozen. So uh, anything that's in a bag, anything that's, let's say, in a pile of soil I have over there, I just can't even get to it. Um, so essentially, I'm bringing in some soil in here just to thaw it out uh, over time. In fact, it may, yeah, it's already sort of thawed out even though I just did this yesterday. So it's not like we're in a deep freeze or anything like that, but certainly if you wanna be able to start seeds, and that's also what we've got going on in here, because of these shelves, I, you know, originally I only had this one shelf 
on each side. And I decided, well, you know, I want to propagate more fig trees this year. Uh, really go crazy. I mean, I've always wanted to propagate more fig trees. That closet we have down in the basement just doesn't necessarily do, uh, it's just, it's difficult to work with as well. I mean, there's so many, there's just a lot of problems, but point is, is that we, we've really expanded and you can count one, two, three, um, four, five. So that's five times 12, that's 60 pots right there. Plus we have um, 48 on the table. Plus there'll be an additional two more. I still have to buy two more bins. Um, so that's uh, another 24. Plus then this 24 down here. So 48, 48, and 60. Plus I thought maybe I could even move this guy over and put a final third bin down here. So that would be quite a bit of pots. Um, what is that, 48? 60, so 60, it's 120 plus 48 is uh, 168 fig trees in here. So 168 rooted cuttings we can start. I don't even have that much material. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I'm gonna have to, I guess, buy some material. I am, um, I do have some material I haven't started yet that will roughly fill the containers in the closet, the grow closet. But for the most part, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have enough material even to fill these pots. I've sold almost all of it at this point. So I don't know what I'm gonna do exactly, but um, I don't know, maybe I can make some cuts on some of these other trees I have in the greenhouse, although I'd rather not. Um, maybe there's some cuts I can make elsewhere and do other things, I, I don't know. But uh, I am gonna buy some material in the future, that's for sure. Um, so that could help supplement this, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> now that I'm really thinking about this in terms of how much space I actually have. Uh, this back here, we put these shelves in, and this is gonna be for my seeds. As you can see, we've got actually some trays here. I even bought, uh, they didn't arrive yet, but I went on Greenhouse Mega Store, which is where I get these pots, ordered another 240 pots, and then I also ordered some trays for starting microgreens. And we're gonna start doing that a little bit, experimenting, seeing how that is. It's mainly for health purposes. Uh, I think broccoli sprouts are probably a really good idea that people should be eating. We also have these larger pots here for maybe larger plants if I wanted to start some. And then we have, of course, the 128 cell trays below it that will start the majority of my seeds and um, yeah, that's kind of what just what's going to happen in here in stages is that uh, not only can I start, by the way, microgreens in those flats, those trays, but can very easily uh, also start things like onions. You know, got to start a lot of onions and early. So this is obviously going to be done in stages and we'll make use of this space. Maybe I may even want to consider more seedlings and have to take out some pots. And that can kind of, I guess, solve my issue of not having enough material. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's kind of what's going on in here. Um, we actually took out the center pole that was sort of supporting the top of the greenhouse. I don't think we really needed it. And also it was, believe it or not, it was rotting down here at the bottom. Um, so eventually it really wasn't doing anything really at all uh, for probably a whole year and didn't even realize it because the bottom had rotted, as I said. Um, we also took out the irrigation that I built in the center of the greenhouse. I attached it to the pole, and actually I brought the irrigation line in the greenhouse, dug a hole that then leads actually out through this bed of figs that's gonna help water these in the future, and then actually connects over there and then goes underground PVC to a connector there. And then, of course, the water comes in right there. So believe it or not, because it's such a far distance, we don't really have the greatest water pressure here in general. This irrigation sprinkler I had decided to use because it's difficult watering in here, if you think about it. Uh, at least in the past, with all these pots stacked high, it was really difficult to maintain them, to feed them, to water everything, to get to everything. So I decided, let's put a sprinkler in here. All I do is flip a switch and it, it waters everything. But 
didn't have enough um, really didn't have enough water pressure for this thing and therefore uh, can't use it just I'll have to put the sprinkler at some other place as we've talked about I know we talked about this in a prior video but you could very easily set up a sprinkler over there with those beds or even over in the summer bed to help irrigate some of those crops I know for sure it's probably better in the fall and in uh, and spring garden beds uh, as they definitely could use those cooler temperatures every time you water um, so yeah that's that's kind of that there's also in here by the way we have some uh, eggplants and pepper plants that I dug up and believe it or not they've been getting through some really cold temperatures they've sort of been dying back and I think the cold is honestly killing them because the figs I, I let them dip to 20 in here in fact if I took out these pepper plants and these uh, uh, eggplants that I dug up and just potted them in some soil I could very easily just let it drop to 15 in here and I've almost never had to run this this space heater I mean you pretty much if it's like 15 outside then you'd have to run it and so far it's been pretty mild and I think last year I, I ran it maybe like 10 nights out of the year which is pretty amazing um, and then of course in March when it started to warm up I actually kicked the heater on almost every night and that was just for getting things off to a head start but I could as an example take these out of here and really not even have to worry about them but I figured this would be a better spot than underneath the greenhouse but I'm starting to think underneath the or underneath the sunroom I'm sorry would probably have been a better idea uh, you know because they're really not liking the temperatures in here and you can see there's already some dieback and they're dying all the way back to pretty much what is like below the soil um, especially the eggplants the peppers maybe are holding on a little bit better but I think I need to get them out of here um, and then bring them back in here in March and hope that they're okay because you know these eggplants and these peppers they take a really long time here in this climate uh, you don't get a whole lot of yield so you really have to be careful about variety the genetics uh, and how early you start them and make sure that you get them off to a great start uh, plant them out at the right time give them some extra soil temperatures this seems to be a really great way of really guaranteeing some good crops is digging them up in the fall putting them in a pot like this and then overwintering them somehow the overwintering process seems to be a little bit tricky for me just because of my circumstances but I wish I had a, a warmer greenhouse I guess that I could put these guys in and they would probably do much better if they're in total darkness I start to think maybe that's not a good thing for them you know they're not deciduous they still have these uh, green stems on them which potentially are producing photosynthesis for the plant so it's not like you know there's no activity right now um, it's kind of the issue for me and then also we have in here not just some figs by the way that you know are my larger fig trees and pots uh, the smaller fig trees and pots that are more experimental but then also we have our capper fig in here directly in the center we grafted it down here at the bottom there's two different varieties it actually has a pretty bad scale problem here that I need to take care of I don't want scale to get out of control but uh, these guys I've essentially took off all of the overwintering crop that they would have but you can see along the branches they do actually have brevas um, technically they're not brevas I believe they would be profici is what you would call them in terms of a capper fig so um, this is potential profici if it was indeed you know laden with the wasp the, the blastophaga that's what we're trying to do is colonize the fig wasp in Pennsylvania with uh, this particular tree here in the greenhouse and yeah it can actually believe it or not the fig wasp will survive at 15 degrees Fahrenheit no problem um, assuming it was overwintering in one of these figs up here that I took off uh, so hopefully this tree becomes a bit more reliable this season now that it's a couple years old now I think it's this might be its second season now I think or maybe it's it's uh, this might be its third I'm not entirely sure and then we also have on the edges of the greenhouse 
This is our cordon figs, our Japanese Espaillé figs. This is Colonel Littman's Black Cross that we tie down to the branches and basically have the two arms going in each direction. In the back, we actually have a panache that's doing the same thing and is all the way across the back, which is really nice. And then I actually have a Coldenon Blanc down here that unfortunately hasn't grown just that well, uh, that well just yet. But I took the top off, you can see, and it's gonna branch out in each direction, hopefully, so that I can do the same thing I've done over here on this side. You have to top it at a particular height that you want so you can get those branches. If I were to top it at a, a taller height, then the arms are gonna be taller. They're gonna be at a higher height. If I top it at a lower height, the arms are gonna be, let's say, down here instead of up against this wire. So, uh, yeah, we just basically, I'm topping it here roughly at, I don't know, eight, eight to 10, 12 inches, somewhere around there. And, uh, and that seems to work out really well in terms of establishing cordons or espaillés and whatever low growing system that you wanna do, I think. As long as you get them about eight inches, six to eight inches off the ground, you'll be fine uh, in the future. And then of course, what's gonna happen with these cordons is the new growth's gonna come out and I'm gonna limit the growth to about one fruiting branch every foot. So there'll be a fruiting branch here, a foot away, another fruiting branch there, another foot away, a fruiting branch there. So there'll be roughly, cause this is a six by eight greenhouse, I'll have roughly eight fruiting branches this way and they're gonna grow up um, hopefully past this this shelving unit here to get as much light as possible. Uh, same thing on the back, about six fruiting branches and then about eight fruiting branches this way. And then right smack dab in the middle is the capper fig. And of course, with this cordon system, it's nice because you could still make use of the space. Every, every winter time, we just cut this thing back to a couple nodes to form some spurs. And it just keeps the whole tree maintained and tidy and not too large. What could be a problem in the future is actually this capper fig. Controlling this capper fig's growth while also being able to colonize the blastophaga is a challenge. And we're gonna just see how that all works out. I don't know. But that's sort of every little thing that's going on in here. I hope, uh, you guys are having a great season so far in terms of maybe some of you guys even started your season or maybe you have started your season in something like this, like a greenhouse. Um, maybe you guys are doing some cuttings like I am. Whatever it is, I hope you guys are doing well. You're staying safe, happy, and healthy. And we'll see you guys soon for the next video. Take care, guys. Have a good one.